Well, back to the beautiful illustrations in the book. You say that most of the pictures are portraits of African gods or Orishas. What inspired you to paint these portraits, and which of the, which one of them are your personal favorites, and why? Well, Elegua is my favorite. That's on the book's cover, right? Yes. And Elegua opened the doors for all the other Orishas to come through. And he was first and foremost. I love him. He works for me in many ways. And, you know, he was my inspiration. You know, I got it from an African mask that I saw. When I saw the mask, One, two, I thought, three. that is a ligua. Mm -hmm. And I painted it just as I saw it, but with all the markings on it that shows that it's a ligua. The Obia Woman by Anastasia the Phoenix Armorer. Chapter 9 Dora could hardly wait to get home and into her bed. She drove her truck slowly up the dirt road that led to her house. As she approached her gate, a tall black hooded figure appeared in front of the truck. Dora stepped suddenly on the brakes. She was startled. The figure stood motionless as the light from the truck shined upon it. Dora sat motionless also, waiting for the figure to move. It didn't. Dora then opened the door, and got out of the truck. She tried to sense who this could be, but the vibrations from the person were unlike anything she had ever felt. She thought perhaps it was a lost spirit trying to find its way. Who are you? Dora asked as she approached the figure. Dora, stop, don't come any closer. Who are you? Dora stopped about 10 feet away from the dark form. It's me, Red Claw. Red Claw? Dora moved towards him. No Dora. Don't come any closer, stay away. Red Claw moved backwards away from Dora. Let me help you Red. There is only one way to help me, and that is to kill me Dora. I want you to know that I did not do this to myself, it was done to me by others. Who did this to you Red? That is not important now. Just promise me that you will not allow them to take me alive. I know that my clan father and clan brothers are searching for me, but you must kill me before they catch me. But Red, I can't kill you. I just can't. Dora was now in tears as she stood before the dark figure. You must. Use your black arrow, it is the only thing that could kill me. If you don't, then others will die. It is a hunger that I cannot resist. I must satisfy it. You must hold on Red, I'm going to find a way to cure you of this. You must believe me. You must trust me. Please, don't give up. I trust you Dora, but I don't know how long that I can continue like this. Please, don't let them take me alive, and always remember that I truly love you Dora. With those words, Red Claw vanished from before Dora's eyes. She called to him, but he was gone. Dora wept for Red Claw as she returned to her truck, that she finally parked in her garage. Dora was so upset that she could not sleep even though she was dog tired. Her mind was consumed with thoughts of Red Claw and how she could obtain the Eye of Ra from Samuel to cure him. It was hours before she could get to sleep, but sleep did finally find her. She slept for a long time. It was Tuesday evening, about 3 p.m. Abby, Kokaka's number one apprentice, walked along the river bank in the swamp gathering slugs, snakes and other night crawlers. Suddenly, she heard footsteps behind her. She turned around to see a tall, extremely handsome man. He was about the age of 35 years old, with red curly hair. His skin was like dark chocolate. He had the stature of a king and was obviously well built. Abby held her lantern high to get a closer look at the handsome man. Who are you and what are you doing here? She asked unafraid. I am Red Claw, a friend of Kokaka. She has been wanting us to meet. He smiled displaying his perfectly white teeth. 
His voice was soft and sexy. He took the covered basket out of her left hand, then raised her hand to his lips and kissed it. Abby felt a tiny tingle as he did so. Kokaka told me you were very attractive, but she fell far short in her description. You are beautiful. His words rang a bell in her soul. She moved even closer to him. Abby was completely charmed by this handsome gentleman. I wonder, he continued, could I be so bold as to ask you to dine with me tomorrow night? He asked and showered her hands with gentle kisses. Abby could feel a wave of desire begin in her mouth, exploding in her brain, and washing its way down her body. Of course, if it's all right with Kokaka. He took the lantern out of her other hand and placed it on the ground. Then he pressed his body on her. As he pressed against her, another wave of desire washed over her. Abby was hooked. He held her in his arms and pressed her lips against hers. His kiss made her head spin. Abby closed her eyes, her lips quivered begging silently for more, and he gave her more. Soon, he laid her lifeless body on the ground by the river and faded away. Lazar walked into the meeting room at the police station at 9 a.m. The meeting was called by the police chief, who was there with the two FBI agents. Lazar's partner, Karen, was there also. The chief opened the meeting. Last night, Agent McLean called me. He told me about his experience at the house of the Obio woman Dora Van Hart. He was very upset. I would be too, if those things had happened to me. We have decided that these murders were not committed by natural people. The agents and I agree that we are dealing with supernatural forces here. Now, let me go down the list of what we have here. First, there are ten children missing. They are all the children of tourists, who came here from around the world. We have searched for these children everywhere, but we have been unsuccessful in finding the slightest trace of them. Second, we have the three American men whose brains were removed, and no one knows how it was done. There are no marks of any kind on the bodies. Third, are the seven native women who have been raped and murdered. There is a small hole on the back of the skulls, and the fluid from the brain, spine, and blood are gone. Now, we must look for these killers in a different way, so I've decided to talk to an Obia woman. Not Mother Dora. I know that you believe in her Lazar, but talking to her and getting information from her is like pulling teeth. As luck would have it, I have the name and number of another Obia woman, who I am told would be happy to talk to us. I will give you her number Lazar. I would like you to call her and make an appointment to meet with us tomorrow if possible at 11.30 a.m., here at the station. I am told she is a Caucasian woman from America, who has lived here for the past 10 years. After we speak to her, we should have a better idea of whom or what we are dealing with. Now, let's go back to Mother Dora, two dead bodies were removed from her restaurant yesterday. It has been confirmed that the men were killed by mice, although none were found, there were droppings all over the restaurant. Mother Dora's story about a demon controlling the mice is incredible to say the least. Anyway, I don't know how all of these things fit together or if they do. Hopefully, Ms. Rhonda Baker, the Obia woman, can tell us that. The chief handed the information to Lazar who was not pleased about using anyone other than Mother Dora, but he said nothing as he left the room and went to his office to make the call. Rhonda was happy to receive the call from Lazar, and she agreed to meet at the police station on Wednesday morning at 11.30. She promised to help them in every way. The Obia woman, Rhonda Baker, arrived at the police station at 11.15 on Wednesday morning. She was met by Detective Lazar, who introduced her to the chief of police. Good morning, Ms. Baker. I appreciate your coming here today to assist us with this problem. As the chief of police, I intend to use all means necessary to solve these murders. I am sure that I can help you chief. I want this murderer found and brought to justice as soon as possible. Rhonda spoke with great confidence. She had her own agenda, of course. You see, many years ago, Rhonda was very much in love with Red Claw 
but he spurned her. She tried everything, but he did not want her. So, she went after his clan father, Lionel Van Hart, Dora's husband. She wants Red Claw dead. That is why she came to the police station. Rhonda's pretty white skin, blonde hair and blue eyes usually gets her most of what she wanted, and when they didn't work, magic got her the rest, with one exception, Red Claw. Her magic did not work on him. It was now time for the meeting. The chief of police, the FBI agents, Lazar, and Karen gathered to hear what the Obia woman had to say. Gentlemen, I understand that you have quite a few problems. First, the children of the tourists. They were taken by the Bakwas, but I assure you that they will be returned unharmed. Then why were they taken in the first place? Asked Lazar. That, I cannot tell you, but as I said, they will be returned. When? When will they be returned? Asked the chief. The day after the eclipse of the moon. Now, gentlemen, about the three Americans, they were killed by the Bakwa's shadow creepers. Creatures you couldn't possibly understand. You can't find them, nor can you possibly prosecute them. But, I assure you that no more Americans will die. Which leaves us with the seven natives, they were killed by one man, an evil man who must be stopped or he will keep on killing. What can you tell us about the man? What is his name? Where can we find him? They were all asking questions at the same time. Gentlemen, gentlemen, please. Now, I will answer all of your questions one at a time. Rhonda raised her voice, and then waited for them to calm down. Then she removed a picture from her purse and handed it to the chief. Now, that is Red Claw, and one week from today, next Wednesday at 10 p.m. he will be at the aquatic club, looking for his next victim. The men passed the picture around the room. You are sure of this? Asked Lazar. I am positive, he will be there, and it is up to you, if he kills again. Said Rhonda. We will be there, and we will stop him. McLean was confident that he had the power to bring this man to justice. The chief thanked Rhonda for her help, and he promised to call her as soon as they brought Red Claw in.